ready to smile again with radio's home folks, They Can Save. Written by Paul Wright. Well, sir, it's early evening as we enter the small house halfway up on the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Cook. Vic is in his easy chair with the newspaper, and Sade, who's just completed a telephone conversation, turns to him now with a determined look in her eye. Listen. Say, mister, there's something I'd like to say to you. What is it, my love? When Ruthie phones about 500 and I turn to you to talk about it, after this, please don't grunt and mutter. She hears that. Why, I haven't the remotest notion what is done. Just is. now, I turned away from the phone and said something about Fred and Ruthie asking about a card game. Well, you had to be funny, funny mans and grunt something about Peoria. Well, Ruthie heard that. I know she did. And what would you like to have me do? At least act like you're pleased. At least make some remark where it looks like the prospect of a game of 500 with Fred oh, and Ruthie. A card game with Fred and Ruthie. Oh, goody, goody, goody. <laughs> yeah. Ha-ha. Uh-huh. Ha-ha. Uh-huh. I really must miss my days. Why, Dorothy, still I'm breathless. <laughs> no, but I mean that about when Ruthie telephones. She's liable to think. What's that? Huh? Somebody's in the kitchen. Oh, yes, yes. Who's there? Everybody in the living room, are they? Oh, somebody's in the kitchen saying somebody's in the kitchen. Oh, stop <laughs> it. My goodness, is this the vaudeville <laughs> show or what? Oh, somebody's in the kitchen. Somebody's in the kitchen. You going to be home all evening, Willie? I got no particular plan. Later on, I might possibly take it. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Gus? Oh, What's the matter with him, Ma? Oh, nothing. What'd you start to say about... <laughs> somebody's in the kitchen. Somebody's in the kitchen. Oh, Vic, for mercy's sake. Mama, don't love me anymore. No, thanks. We're going to have company. Yeah. Who? Uncle Fletcher's coming. Who is right. he now? He stopped out in the alley by the garbage box for a minute to chat with Charlie Razor's gum. Oh, no, Ish. What's the matter? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Miss Timbottom are coming over pretty soon. Yeah? Play cards. Mm. We just can't play cards with Uncle Fletcher around. Darn it, I wish he'd pick out different times to I drop I don't think past. he's going to stay but a little while, Mom. You say so? He said he was going down to visit some friends at the Black Kentucky Hotel. Well, then, maybe he's he'll... got a shoebox full of souvenirs and mementos. <laughs> More souvenirs than mementos? In this batch of souvenirs and mementos is a collection of watch bobs. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just as fond of Uncle Fletcher as I can be, and I feel ashamed of myself for wishing he'd choose another evening to stop past, but... Darn it, if people attempt to play cards when he's around, it's like oh, kind of... Oh, <laughs> Here we are. Hi, Uncle Fletcher. You in the living room? Are they, Russell? Yes. Paul and Pablo with you? Come on in, Uncle Fletcher. Greetings and salutations, old pal. Russell told me you people was at home. Uh-huh. Uh, hello, Bray. Hello there. Oh, Sadie. Hello, Uncle Fletcher. I don't have to say hello to you, Russell. He said hello to me outside. Oh, that's right. Got a new pair of shoes, Uncle Fletcher? Well, just the average Vic, right? Uh-huh. Well, I sometimes chew tobacco myself. You refer to George, Ralph, or Andy Ralph? Uh, paper plates, gaskets, and cherry pies. I don't know him, I don't guess. Oh, it's very simple. You take a medium-sized cup of baking soda and a all spoon... Right, all right, all right, all right. Well, I can't stay but a little while, Sadie. Oh? I'm on my way down to the Bright Kentucky Hotel. Well, look, you be awful, awful careful going through them railroad yards. It's so terrible, terrible, dangerous. Yeah, Sadie, I know. Oh, I'd a whole lot rather he stayed here with us than pick his way among them switch engines and freight trains. Beg pardon, Sadie? Uncle Fletcher, I don't think you ought to go to that Bright Kentucky Hotel. Nighttime and all. Why, well, I just shiver to think of you crossing them millions of railroad tracks. I'm going to visit Russigan Fishigan from Fishigan, Michigan. Well, visit him some other time. Visit him when it's daylight. Fine, fine, yeah, yes. Yeah, don't yeah. think you ought to be around any old Chicago and Alton railroad yards at night. And I bet Bessie and Miss Keller feel exactly... I'm going to show Russigan Fishigan from Fishigan, Michigan my collection of watch fobs. Well, show it to him some morning. While I'm here, Vic, I might as well show you people my collection of watch fobs. I'd like to see him. I'm just not going to let him go. Why, I just never forgive myself. Uh, a trapeze acrobat out of the circus wouldn't be safe in those railroad yards at night. Uh, 
Now, I've opened my shoebox, and here's my collection of watch clubs. That thing on the top there is a razor strop, isn't it? Uh, watch for a Russell. <laughs> Looks like a razor strop to me. It even says razor strop on it. It was originally a razor strop. But now it's a watch fob, huh? Now it's a watch fob. <laughs> the biggest watch fob I ever saw in all my life. <laughs> I'll give you the story on that. Okay. Uncle Fletcher, isn't there somebody downtown you could show your collection to this evening? I just shiver at the idea of you traipsing through those railroad yards in the dark. Lady, I don't know whether you know what and where Cincinnati, hey, Ohio are. Hey, now, you are, listen to me a second. Cincinnati, Ohio. I know all about what and where or Cincinnati, Ohio are. Now, listen to me. I want you to get this. Why? I don't want you to go to that bright Kentucky hotel tonight. I'm going to ask you to pay your visit to your friends there in the daytime. I know good and well, Bessie and Miss Keller, and everybody else would agree with me. I'm asking you as a favor, Uncle Fletcher. Put it down to silliness if you want to, but I'm really serious about it. Well, uh, yes. Well, uh, what I could Stay do... Stay here. Is... Fred and Ruthie Stambottom are coming over after bed. And I wouldn't be surprised, but what, maybe people will feel like ice cream later on. Well, what I started to say was, Sadie, I could take my watch club collection down to the interurban station and show oh, yes, it. Yes, yeah, yes, sure. Show it to Ernie Fattler. Yes, Ernie Fattler. Show it to Ernie Fattler. Ernie Fattler is the ticket agent at the interurban station. Yes, Ernie Fattler. Mm-hmm, Ernie. You're not acquainted with Ernie Fattler, Sadie? Uh, no, but he's... Well, nice. Ernie Sattler's nice. Ernie Sattler is nice. Mm hmm. Show him your watch fob collection. I might do that. I might do that. Oh, Dan. Well, we seem to have straightened out that situation. Crisis has passed. Vic! Uh, hello. A moment ago, Russell here referred to this article as a razor strop. It is a razor strop. Give me the story, Annie. I'll give you the story of it. Goodness, I still shiver at the idea of crossing them millions of railroad tracks. I'll take it for granted that everybody in this room knows what and where Cincinnati, Ohio are. Uh -huh. I'll take it for granted everybody in this room knows what and where Cincinnati, Ohio are and go directly into the store. Yeah. <clears throat> well, sir, back in Belvedere in the year 1905, there was a crony of mine called Earl McFrip. Oh. Uh -huh. Earl McFripp was the kind of a fellow that's known to the public as dude, pop, or dandy. Uh huh. Dude, pop, or dandy, please. Uh huh. Now, uh -huh. Uh, Earl McFripp was such a dude, pop, or dandy, he wore this razor strop as a watch for. Oh, really? Must have hung way down by his shoes. It did hang way down by his shoes. And you should have seen his shoes. He had yellow bulldog toed Oxford. And the hops on them were over three inches high. One of the Oxfords buttoned up, the other Oxford laced up. Good. Our old McFrip was a dude popper dandy. Oh, sure was. Uh, so you see, Russell, this article is a watch fob after all. Yeah. <laughs> now here we have a gold watch fob that turns a putty. Oh, shit. It was originally the property of Dr. Aubrey Cullen of Carlock, Illinois. It started out by being 18 karat solid gold. But Dr. Cullen moved to Dismal Seepage, Ohio, where the climate is very damp and peculiar. And in the course of 15 years, the climate of Dismal Seepage, Ohio, gradually changed this watch fob from 18 karat gold into putty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, listen, I'll drop it on the library table here. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the damp climate of Dismal Seepage, Ohio, changed this solid gold watch fob into putty. In the course of 15 short years. Yeah, <laughs> now, this next watch bob is mighty interesting because it belongs to one of the shortest uh -huh. men. The doors will ring and the uh -huh. doors Fred, Ruthie. Who'd you say, Sadie? Mr. Miss Tim, madam. Russell, do you uh, want no, to... No, I go let him in. I got my shoes in. Well, uh, I'll be leaving, Sadie. You got company. No, oh, not at all. You people want to play cards, likely. And I'll stroll on down to the Bright Kentucky Hotel. Oh, no. But... You said you wouldn't. You said you'd keep away from the Bright Kentucky Hotel tonight. Uh, you said... I, I must spoke myself. I'm at the interurban station. I'll stroll down to the interurban station and visit with Ernie Fattler. Will you now, really? You mean that? Sure, I'll show Ernie my collection. Go with him, Russell. 
What? Go with him. And see that he don't change his mind and sneak on down to the bike and take Yes. Your... I'll give you a, a nice dime. <laughs> well, swell. Hello, Hello, people. Come on in. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Tad. Glorious evening. Glorious evening. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. <laughs>